I'm not trying to be better than anyone in any way, shape, or form. I'm just experiencing the joy. Hey, bud, I was wondering... Whoa, 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 whoa. What? What's going on? I'm fine. I'm fine. Are you sure? Because you've been looking at your phone a lot lately. I Dude, I swear, if you go on one of your rants about how social media is melting people's brains, destroying democracy, and sucking the life out of the economy, I don't want to fucking hear it. No, no, I swear, it's nothing like that. But if it was... Whatever. Talk to them, not me. Preview. Unfortunately, whenever adults say social media is evil, they sound old-fashioned and uncool. Like narcs, frankly. So what do we do? I've worked as a social media manager for three different nonprofits. I've had my own accounts, and I've been making stuff for YouTube as a hobby for 10 years at this point. So well, that's it then. What's it? Social media hasn't paid off for you, so you have a chip on your shoulder. Well, no, like I've done research on people with bigger platforms. Yeah, but you're jealous of them. What do you think I'm jealous of? Their platform affords them brand deals, which makes them money, and they live their creative entrepreneurial dreams. Is that what you want to do? I want to create the next big social media platform. Oh! Yeah, that's what I'm reading about on my phone. Oh, cool, okay. Well, I hope you could show me some of your designs sometime. God, you're suffocating me. Can you talk to the camera, please? Okay, I'm gonna cover fame, demographics, and money. Then I want to hear your business plan. Is that okay? <sighs> All right. Chances are you're watching this on YouTube, which is technically a social media site. It's in the name, YouTube, iTube. We all tube for YouTube. Now, rather than try to analyze other people on this platform, I'm gonna analyze myself. I'm on YouTube because yes, I like making videos. Yes, I want people to see them. Yes, it would be nice if I could make a living doing this, but in order to do that, I'd need more watch time to upload more regularly, maybe get some sponsorships and probably run a Patreon. So of course, there's no way everybody on these platforms could make a living doing it. There's a select few at the top and the majority of people don't have as much reach. So I wanna briefly talk about something called the technological curve of acceptance. It's basically an S curve that illustrates the rate of adoption of a new technology. There's a link in the description if you wanna read more about that. An S curve also describes the growth pattern of these influencers over the time that they gather their following. Sometimes the slope of the S curve is different, but it's extremely rare, if not unheard of, for something to go through constant linear growth. Most influencers' popularity can fit into four categories, filling a niche, hitting a trend, having some kind of broad appeal, or getting lucky, or some combination of all four of those. Which leads me to the first of many philosophical questions I have in this video. Would you want to know the final earnings of a career spent creating content online? Hey, hey. Huh? Would you? Would I what? If you could know the sum of your total influence, would you want to know? Well, that's a free will question. Right. Assuming that telling me the results wouldn't change my behavior and the effort that I'm putting in. I guess, yeah, I would want to know. Why is that? Because then I wouldn't feel like I'm just a gambler at a slot machine. I would know the slice of pie that I'm afforded in life and maybe approach my work a little more freely. Why, what about you? I wonder if the work that I produce... <laughs> I wonder if my content would be as good if I knew I would never make a living at it. Maybe you'd never make a living because of that exact attitude. Wait, 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 wait. I'm curious. Do you think content overall would be better or worse if views, engagement, and followers, and any of that stuff no longer mattered. I don't know. I think that's a matter of taste. Some people prefer long content, some people prefer short content. So far, we haven't found a way to make long form novel content go viral. That's why short form derivative content is king. Have you seen TikTok? Can I keep reading now, please? So all of that is a little bit about fame. Now I wanna talk about parasocial relationships, which are, in short, one-sided relationships with media personalities. Parasocial relationships are defined by the audience not really knowing the media personality and the personality not really knowing their audience. The amount of give and take is a total mystery. A viewer could watch the same video once or a hundred times, and even though the content stays the same, their relationship to it 
changes. Even the random Instagram account you found of the hottie in your area can be a parasocial dynamic where you create a fantasy of that person through the lens of their content. What's weird about this parasocial stuff is that it has an expiration date, whether we admit it or not. Anyone who creates action-oriented content tells personal stories, or looks for drama, goes through a process of heightening and raising the stakes until they hit their expiration date. Oftentimes, to get views or engagement or whatever, a creator will push the drama and conflict to satisfy their audience and keep their interest. The life cycle is one of the following. One, the heightening builds until the content becomes so exaggerated that it's unhinged and pointless. Hey, so this is editing, David. I was looking for examples of unhinged content. This is uh, Colin's key. I just wanted to show you uh, some of the comments that really made me laugh. From Monkeycraft S, it was really fascinating. I watched it over and over again. <laughs> From Tito Cat, this channel has changed so much. I liked the pancake art videos, sad face. Number two, they run out of ideas and the creator gets burned out and quits. Look at any of the people who started on YouTube and where they are now. Number three, the heightening stops and the creator finds a new baseline at a lower level of popularity than when they started, but they carry on. At the end of the day, a parasocial relationship is a media habit. I'm gonna say that one more time. A parasocial relationship is a media habit. Depending on the kind of content, no person has an endless interest in the same kind of thing over and over again. And spending time watching someone on a screen is very different from spending time with someone in person, one-on-one. -on -one. The parasocial connection is most powerful among vulnerable people. That means people who are young, people who are lonely, and people with varying degrees of mental health issues. In my opinion, a parasocial relationship relies on exposure of some kind. Exposure of people's history, of their psychology, of their bodies, and of their abilities. That's what heightening does. It pushes the boundaries of what a person is willing to expose about themselves. Our enjoyment of other people's exposure has a limited depth of feeling and an expiration date whether we're aware of it or not. We can only feel so much from these mediated, screen-based, edited representations of people. We can only spend so much time listening to them and watching them before we're ready for something else. Hey, you, you might like this part. God, you're still going? Yeah. I watched like three episodes of The Good Place on double speed while you've been talking. As Jay Mander says, because television cannot convey the essence of life, it makes sense for television producers to concentrate on information in which life essence is not required for the message to be communicated. You don't need to feel the essence of a football player or a bomber pilot or a police attack squad to follow the action. And you surely don't need to feel the life in the product that is advertised since the product has no life to begin with. And so, football games, action dramas, and product commercials in which the image can carry the story obtain a degree of communications efficiency that is not possible with humans, animals, and plants. The cult of personality is as rampant as ever, and with a stream of new faces, perspectives, and approaches, we don't need to think about the limits of the medium that we're using. Recently, I had the experience of being quarantined alone for two weeks in Hope, British Columbia. I tried to talk to friends on the phone, but I found myself filling the silence with media. After about four days, I was exhausted mentally and losing my grip. I was tired, wired, and disconnected. I hope people can agree that consuming media in isolation is not a substitute for social support, and 2020 has proven that video calls with family and friends are at best a fun diversion and at worst, a clusterfuck that provides little relief from the pandemic, elections, social unrest, the economy, climate change. Dude, you're being a bummer. Well, I want to get this off my chest, but you're boring. You said yourself, content creation is about exposures. Go ahead and put on a show. Are you kidding me? Do a little dance. <sighs> Demographic data categorizes people. Categorizing people feeds the algorithm. The custom experience keeps you online. Targeted with ads, bombarded by fads. <laughs> they get you addicted. Enough dancing. Oh, thank God. I take issue with that because who cares? We pay for these platforms by looking at ads. If you don't want to look at ads, just install an ad blocker or a cookie blocker. No, 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 you pay for them with your demographic data. When a company has your data, they track things like your pacing on the website, your likelihood of engagement, and what to give you content-wise to stay online. Because short-form content is derivative, you'll stick to what's familiar, which doesn't allow for something new or different. The chance of seeing past your algorithm is low. Says you. I follow lots of different viewpoints just to keep my algorithm sharp. Good on you then. 
Yeah. Okay. Good. As much as I appreciate Joe Biden's messages of unity and bipartisanship, it's going to take more than a few speeches to soften the hearts of people living in a different reality. We trust our algorithms and influencers because we agree with them already. Unless you're like this 13 year old and you go looking for stuff you disagree with just to keep your algorithm sharp. <laughs> While people are feeling disconnected and stressed, the content on social media hasn't slowed down. Conversation continues about who to blame, who to trust, how to vote, and what to buy. Next time you're feeling down, notice your media habits. Do you watch comedy, drama, self-help, documentary, news, sports? In my best cases, I'll simply enjoy myself, get invested a little bit, and then move on with my life. In my worst cases, I'll become anxiously preoccupied and feel like I'm owed something just because I've offered my time and attention. I might feel like I need to do something wild, like go to a protest, or at somebody on social media, or maybe I'll just write a long fucking YouTube video. Pause. What's the point of trying to fix these problems through electronics right now? Can't we just wait while a vaccine is distributed before soul searching and running political movements? But people in power aren't waiting. Bad actors are taking advantage of people's exhaustion to make the situation worse. You know, we're more susceptible to radicalization. Only if you go looking for political content. I'm just trying to distract myself from my stresses. Your stresses? Yeah, I'm broke, dude. Do you know how stressful that is? Wait, what do you need money for? So I can look cool, do fun stuff, and cover my basic needs. What do you need money for? Consumer culture mostly values happiness as a finished product, something to be gained because we crossed a finish line. A value of nouns over verbs. Money is great at quantifying products, but it's not so great at qualifying effort, let alone representing true value. Yeah, but money, like social media, is just a tool. It's like a flow of energy, you know? Sure, but it has a corrupting influence when the incentives are wrong. I agree, and that's what my social media platform is based on. Right, yes, uh, I, I do wanna let you talk more, I just- Whatever, just wrap it up, dude. We can't talk about money without talking about capitalism and individualism. And I can't talk about money because I'm a broke ass student. So here are my questions, not my talking points. Do we value individualism just because of America's history? Or is it something innate to the human spirit? How do we find the healthy balance of individualism and collectivism? Does capitalism feed into individualism along with concentrations of wealth and influence? For example, does the anger of the lower class come from a sense of injustice because as individuals, we feel we haven't gotten a fair shot? Would we feel the same anger if the story of individualism wasn't fed to us so strongly through schooling, political leaders, movies, TV shows, and influencers online? When people gain wealth or influence, do they become more generous? If so, why? If not, why not? China has become the poster country for collectivism, as well as communism. If you want a trip down paranoia lane, look into their social credit system. It's going to have a nationwide launch in the new year, and will begin a major chapter in the story of human beings being converted into data points. <sighs> data can be useful in the hands of the right people, but what defines rightness is of course always up for debate. I do want to make a small case study of V Taiwan. V Taiwan was an initiative in the Taiwanese government to design away the incentives for trolling and abuse and move political debate closer to internet powered governance, transparent, inclusive, and above all, consensus seeking. The software was designed so that people looking at an issue would go through a series of statements about the issue and click on what they most agree with. Those results would then map out what parts of the issue they could agree on, and a new draft could be made to find further points of consensus. At the end of the day, politics should be about advancing popular policies for the greater good. But again, what defines good changes depending on people's values. V Taiwan is trying to make that conversation about values more productive. I'm sorry, I can tell I'm boring you. Yeah. Can I ask you a couple questions? About what? They're about emotions. And for each question you can answer when I'm feeling stressed or when I'm feeling calm. Sure, I'll bite. When are you most able to receive new information? When I'm calm. When do you want to feel alone? Or uh, when do you want to be alone? <laughs> Does anyone ever want to feel alone? <laughs> when do you most feel like arguing or fighting? When I'm stressed. When do you spend a lot of time uh, watching TV, on the computer, or using your phone? Both. When do you make the best decisions? 
when I'm calm. The point of these questions is to try to reflect on your relationship with social media and media of all kinds. I think people are being made to feel stressed, isolated, less open-minded, while becoming addicted to the source of their discontent. The source of discontent being news cycles, social media, and internet content that's incentivized toward conflict and consumerism. I know all this. Stop talking. I'm gonna tell you about my social media platform. Hi, our platform is free, has instant load times, and runs on all operating systems. We'd like it to be ad free, but you'll still see untargeted ads on billboards, near buildings, and in print media. Peer-to-peer -peer chat has a learning curve, but gets easier over time. We have a robust non-verbal interface that gets pretty compelling once you get the hang of it. Unfortunately, we're dealing with a pretty massive bug, and the virus blocker has to be manually delivered. Key users are getting the virus blocker as we speak. In the meantime, please make sure to install this patch. Notifications are turned off by default, and you can choose if you want to receive messages slowly, at a medium pace, or instantly. With effort, you can adjust your build. We're compatible with international commerce, just be careful on those stock markets. Key users are overclocking certain regions, so our server farm is heating up. If we don't make some top-down changes soon, the platform might burst into flames. So, time's running out! Don't wait to join offline. I have been trying to learn to play the piano for 40 years. And I just keep at it. I'm not trying to be better than anyone in any way, shape, or form. I'm just experiencing the joy of playing the best I can. Life was never meant to be a competition. And if you miss the joy, you miss it.